So, number 13, parametric equations. I've got x and y expressed in terms of a parameter t, but I need dy by dx. And the second derivative with respect to x, well, the only thing I can do, first of all, is differentiate them with respect to the variable I've got. So dx by dt would be 2 plus, and that would just go to t. dy by dt would just be t squared minus 3. Then I can get my dy by dx by doing dy by dt times dt by dx. So much just in the last question there. So that's going to be t squared minus 3 times 1 over that, 1 over this, 1 over t plus 2, but I'll just put it underneath. So I'll just put t plus 2. So that was the first one. The second derivative, so if I want now the second derivative of y with respect to x, I'd have to differentiate it again. But I can only differentiate it with respect to t. So I'd have to take this thing and differentiate it with respect to t, and then again multiply by dt by dx to get it back to x again. So what's that? It's going to be the product rule, uh, sorry, the quotient. So I've got t plus 2 squared, so differentiate the top, 2t, leave the bottom alone, minus, leave the top alone, t squared minus 3, differentiate the bottom, not that, this one, the original one, that's just times 1, times dt by dx, which of course is that 1 over t plus 2. That's quite handy because I can just join that. So now I've got t plus 2 cubed. Multiply this top out. 2t squared plus 4t minus a t squared plus a 3. So I've got just 1t squared plus 4t plus 3. Straight away you see 3 ones are 4. Uh, maybe the 3 plus 1 is 4. t plus 2 cubed. So I'll just factorise that top then. t plus 1 t plus 3, all over t plus 2 cubed for my second derivative of y with respect to x. And straight away you can see, having a factorisation there in the numerator, having these two brackets means there'll be two values of t, which will give a value of 0 for the second derivative, so there's going to be two points of inflection, but that's later on. Now the next bit, find the values of t for which the point is stationary point, the curve is stationary point. Well, it'll be stationary if dy by dx ever equals 0, which means that it's sufficient for the numerator to equal 0. So straight away you can see t is going to be plus or minus root 3. Now it says just the values of t, luckily you'd have to go back in and feed that in to find the actual x and y coordinates. So the values of t are plus or minus 3, determine their natures. Well that comes from the second derivative. So take them in order. So if t is negative root 3, what's the second derivative? What's its value? So put it into the brackets. Negative root 3 plus 1, negative root 3 plus 3, over negative root 3 plus 2 cubed. So what have you got? That's negative 1.7 or so. So that's going to be a negative times, and that's going to be a positive, and that's going to be a positive, which means overall it's negative. So if d squared y by dx squared is less than 0, then that means it's curving this way, which is going to give you a maximum. So I can say that you've got a maximum turning point at t equals negative root 3. Now what about the other one? t equals root 3. Same calculation. Feed it in. So putting root 3 into that, you can see it's all going to be positive. So it's going to be positive, so it's going to be a minimum. I've started, so I've started, so I'll finish. Root 3 plus 2 cubed, how fast can you write? Not very fast. That'll be positive, that'll be positive, that'll be positive, the whole thing's positive. So dy by dx squared is greater than 0. And if it's greater than 0, it means it's curving up the way, which means I've got a minimum turning point at t equals root 3. A bit messy. I'll identify the two answers. So that's that part. And then finally, show the curve is exactly two points of inflection. Right up here, I'll just clear this. So the curve is exactly two points of inflection. Well, you're going to get a point of inflection where the curvature changes. Changes from curving one way to cover the other. Curving the other. That's the second derivative that determines that. That means the second derivative would have to equal zero, which means it's sufficient for that numerator to equal 0, which means you've got t equals negative 1 or t equals 3. Now what's the wording? Show that it's exactly 2. I'll just have to put that down. Which means the curve has two points of inflection. 
Hey, I can't see at that and that. One at t equals negative one and one at t equals three. Oh, there must have been a better way to express that. Right, there's question 30.